Today is Wednesday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We're on a fog day today. And tomorrow, to make your life easier, tomorrow we're going to do a specific heat lab on Thursday, as long as we have a full class period. And in this lab, we have to run a burner and we have to run a balance to measure this. So you should probably, if you don't already know Stone Cold how to do it, find your, in the Schoology, your virtual handouts and the job aids. And in there, it tells you how to use a Bunsen burner, which we used about the second week of school. And how to use the four beam balance, because we're gonna be using both of those. So I gave you a folder at the beginning of the year. I gave you a hard copy of this. I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the year, I should be in the folder. And you'll find that hard copy useful because we have to run a burner and a balance. Okay, on to the practice problems. Okay, so we did this equation, which, and by the way, I want to mention on the lab, I have the C here and the delta T's there on the lab paper. I changed that for next year. If not, you're going to do you when you get it. So remember, if you multiply things in order, it doesn't matter the order, but this part's over here and this part's over there. I'll remind you that on Thursday. Uh, but you use this equation. And most of these problems are going to probably have water in it. So practice problem one, or example problem one, we did in class is where we had 20 kilograms, and I think it was iron was 1,700 joules times kilograms, uh, joules over kilograms times meters per second. I've got to find the right chapter here. And uh, the temperature went from 15 up to 25. So we've got the final temperature first, the initial temperature second. When the lab, you got to pay attention to that. I'll help you with it. Okay, practice problem one. Asked about the air in the room. First star ball. We'll, we'll need again. These things, air is not in this one, so apparently they're gonna give that one to you. There's our equation. The air in the room has a mass of 50 kilogram and a specific heat of 1,000 joules per kilogram times degrees Celsius. What is the change in thermal energy when it warms from 20 to 30? So you gotta put everything in the right place. Where does the 20 go and where does the 30 go? 20 degrees Celsius is where it starts, 30 degrees Celsius is where it ends. Okay, somebody asked me about that. So it's 50 kilograms times 30 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius, and the specific heat for air is 1,000 joules per kilogram times degrees Celsius. Now, what math do you do first here? Well, you do the stuff inside. The parentheses, there's nothing to do here, nothing to do here, but there's a subtraction there, so we have to do that first. And when you subtract 30 minus 20, you get 10. Now you can multiply these things, but watch what happens to the units. The units will tell you if you're doing the problem right. We've got kilograms here in a numerator and then there in a denominator, that cancels. We've got a degree Celsius in the numerator here, degree Celsius in the denominator there. That cancels, and the only unit left is joules, and that is the unit for thermal energy change. Remember, thermal energy change and heat are the same thing for our purposes. So 50 times 10 times 1,000 should be 500,000 joules. You're almost half done. This is the easiest assignment you're going to get all year, probably. Practice problem two. The temperature of a 2.0 kilogram block increases by 5 degrees Celsius when 2,000 joules of thermal energy are added to the block. What is the specific heat of the block? Specific heat is this small C that's purple. By the way, don't confuse that with the degree Celsius sign, which has a degree thing with it and is a capital C. Okay. 
So when we put in what we've got, we already have the subtraction for the temperature. It's telling us it goes up by five, it increases by five. So we, we don't have an initial and a final, we just know it already went up by five. So you just put the five there, two kilograms here, and 2,000 joules is the energy added, and we're looking for C. Well, how do you do this math? What should you do first? There's a couple of options. One is just to go ahead and multiply these two, and then after you're done, then divide. I don't remember how I did this one. It looks like I divided by two, and then I turned around and divided by five, probably because I wanted to take these units one, over one at a time. So if I divide this side by two kilograms to be equal, I have to divide this side by two kilograms. Kilograms cancels, the two cancels. And 2,000 joules divided by two is 1,000 joules over kilograms. Then I'll divide both sides by five Celsius. <coughs> okay? And when I divide this side by five degrees Celsius, my five cancels, my degrees cancels. But to be equal, I don't have that in there. To be equal, I have to divide this side by five degrees Celsius. And then I'll have my C. Now, 1,000 divided by five is 200. But look at my units. I'm going to have joules over kilograms. And then this is in a denominator. So the degree Celsius will join the kilograms in the denominator. So it'll be 200 joules per kilogram times degree Celsius. And that's the right unit for C. Last question, last problem. This is pretty easy. Our heat, or change in thermal energy is Q, which interestingly, there's no delta with that. Delta usually means for change, but with Q, it's already included. That's the, something that wouldn't make sense to you right now. It didn't make sense to me for a long time. But for whatever reason, we choose not to, this is already a change, and that delta's already built in. Mass, temperature change, and C. Problem three. A wooden block has a mass of 0.200 kilograms, a specific heat of 710 joules per kilogram times degree Celsius, and is at a temperature of 20. What's the final temperature if its thermal energy increases by 2,130 joules? We've got every number but that one. So where do these numbers go? The 0.2 kilograms goes for mass, Specific heat of 710 goes here. Temperature of 20 degrees Celsius is temperature initial. And 2,130 joules goes here. So it looks like this starting out. We can go ahead and cancel kilograms as a unit. So what should you do on the math here now? You can't do this subtraction because you don't have that number. This is the thing we're looking for. So you got to do some other math first. Probably the simplest thing and the most intuitive thing for you to do is go ahead and multiply these two. Let's see if that's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, check the number with this on a calculator because when I did this math, I just did it. In my did the math in my head and did it. So you might want to check, make sure it's right. Uh, 0.2 times 710 is 142. This T minus 20 degrees Celsius is still here. The 2130 joules is here. So now what we can do is divide by the 142 joules per degree Celsius. Notice how my kilograms have gone, but I still have the joules per degree Celsius. When I divide over here, we'll see what happens. Okay, I divide both sides by 142. Joules per degree Celsius. That cancels the unit, cancels the 142, but I forgot to do this again. To be equal, I have to divide this side by 142. And then when you do that, that comes out to 15 times when you do that one. See if you can do that one in your head. Notice 21.3 is 
one and a half times bigger than 14.2, you can actually do that one in your head. Okay, comes out to 15 degrees Celsius is T minus 20. Now you're pretty home free. Look at what happens to the unit. We talked about this many times. If you have a joules over a joules over degrees Celsius, how do you get rid of that? When you, well, you bring this up here and what do you do? You flip it, so it becomes degrees Celsius over joules. Gotta flip that, times joules, and then this cancels and ta-da, you're left with degrees Celsius, which is the right unit. So some practice on stuff we've looked at many times. This is pretty easy, just add 20 to both sides. Add 20 degrees Celsius there, it goes away. Add 20 degrees Celsius there and you get 35. Uh, do check all that math with the calculator though because I didn't do it with a calculator, so it could be wrong. Not even sure I checked the answer. I'll check it right now. No, I can't because it's all the way across the room. Okay, so that's what you have to have done for Thursday. Those three problems. And this is the lab. You'll need a lab paper I'm gonna give you. You'll need that handout, probably. You're gonna want a paper copy, not the one on the computer. So if you have that in your folder, bring that, and we'll do this lab together.